Hello there, now that a couple of weeks have passed since the launch of World of Warcraft's 1026 patch, now that the initial dust has settled, I thought it's a good time to share my in-depth thoughts about how the Plunstorm event has played out with a full review of the feature. I plan to do full reviews of every World of Warcraft patch a few weeks after they come out, so if you're interested in my takes on what are good, bad or indifferent in-game, do make sure to subscribe. Now, if you're looking for a video describing why the Plunderstorm is totally great, or indeed why it's truly awful, then this probably isn't the video for you. I'll be diving deep into the new feature and running through the bits I liked and the bits I didn't, so if you prefer a more nuanced set of opinions, then do stay tuned. Before I dive into the main new patch feature Plunderstorm, in case there's any folks out there who still haven't played it, I'll quickly run through what it is. Thunderstorm is a new Battle Royale game mode that runs separately from the main World of Warcraft game, but which you can access from the main login screen. You create a fresh character based on a World of Warcraft race. The characters have no class, instead you collect abilities as you progress the game, starting only with a basic attack and a health potion. As well as defeating other players, you can collect Plunder, which progresses a reputation track called Renown, which goes on to unlock cosmetic rewards both for the Plunderstorm game itself but also for the main World of Warcraft game. Like most battle royales, it takes place in a limited size game world, in this case it's the BFA revamp of the Arashi Highlands, and over time a contracting storm forces players to get closer and closer together. The win state is to be the last man standing, so yes, this is at heart a PvP style game mode. It's fair to say that from the moment the feature was announced, it's been highly polarizing, with many players proclaiming their love for it and equally defending it against all criticisms, but also just as many players who truly loathe it. In fact, it's probably seen the biggest split in the player base that I've ever seen in the time I've been playing World of Warcraft. So what is it about this game mode that's generated such passion? Let's go and dig in. My first impression came from the in-game controls. As an MMO, World of Warcraft is based in tab targeting combat, where you lock on to an enemy using tab or by clicking on them, and then your abilities just hit whoever it is you've locked onto. I think that most people's response to suggestions that the WoW game engine could be adopted to action combat, where you hit whatever happens to be in front of you, would have been to have seen that it was probably impossible. But action targeting in the WoW engine is exactly what the team has managed to pull off. And I have to say that having seen how well it works has been a bit of a revelation. The combat is buttery smooth and feels just as good as the main WoW game's combat does. As a player of story-based RPGs, I often find that adopting to different games action combat to be quite difficult. But that wasn't the case here. Once I set my key bindings up, and more on that in a minute, it just played so well. After that experience, today I can totally believe in a future where new games and different genres could be built on the World of Warcraft engine. Imagine a story-based RPG based in Azeroth. I know I'd certainly buy it. My one criticism was that the default key bindings were very strange in my opinion, so much so that I kind of feel that perhaps the team omitted to do a usability pass before going live. Now, keeping in mind how long the World of Warcraft UI and controls have been around, almost 20 years by now, maybe it's understandable that the team aren't accustomed to having to deal with such details. The game is built around a pirate-based theme with characters wearing pirate gear and we start in a lobby that's essentially a pirate landing base. This base was built from freehold assets and is probably one of the better game lobbies out there. I've never really been a huge fan of competitive game lobbies, but this one is pretty intricate and has lots to explore and plenty of stuff to do while you wait for the match to start. The match itself takes place in the Arathi Highland zone as it was revamped in BFA. At first glance, it's a zone that's about as far from pirate themed as you could possibly imagine. There is technically a coast, but it's cut off by mountains, and the NPC enemies are all just Alliance and Horde soldiers. In isolation, this is a really strange choice for the pirate theme. The developers did say that they tried out other areas such as Drusfar, but the zones didn't really work out for them. Battle Royale game areas do have very specific requirements in terms of the landscape, cover, size and shape, and my guess is that the team had probably struggled to find a zone that met their needs in terms of both graphical quality and gameplay. 
This is a shame in my view, as I personally found that the thematic mismatch between the zone and the game mode took me out of the world a bit. I also felt that over the longer term the zone started to feel very samey, as did the music. In fact, the music actually got a little bit wearing eventually, something that's never been an issue in the main World of Warcraft game, even though I always play with the music on. I suspect that if this was to become a more evergreen game over the long term, the team would need to invest heavily in building out custom areas for it. This is where it all starts to get really interesting. Many of the battle royale staples are here. Instead of scavenging for armor and weapons, we scavenge for more magical abilities, but the team have also included a major PvE element. This involves us scavenging for gold, which then gets converted into progress towards collecting cosmetics. A per event quest with a daily bonus provides some additional texture for changing our initial priorities in every match. This is a very interesting approach as it allows players who would not normally seek PvP style games to have something to do as an alternative to going on that seek and destroy other players mission. This unfortunately does also happen to be a major driver of the overall community response. And what a spicy response the community had. Honestly, what played out is probably no surprise to anyone who has ever read a wowhead or forum post about world PvP, especially from back in the pre-war mode days. For those of us who did read those posts, well, we all know all too well that PvP and PvE players do not mix at all well in PvP environments, and this was no exception. PvE players expressed anger and frustration about being attacked before they could complete their quest, and PvP players expressed anger and frustration at players running into the storm just to deprive them of their loot, amid all sorts of accusations about cheating and the like. And in fact, it wouldn't surprise me if Blizzard hadn't seen an increase in player reports as a result of this feature launching. On the rewards front, the main PvP reward is for winning a match where you get a tabard and an eye patch. The rest of the rewards all come from the PvE element and the grind to complete the renown track. Now, I personally think that the scale of the grind was a major negative. At launch, it looked likely to be around 20 to 30 hours of gameplay, which put a lot of pressure on the PvE side, which in my opinion, honestly, isn't really all that engaging. The depth and texture in the battle royale come from the combat and outsmarting opponents, not from running around gathering gold. For PvE oriented players, the length of time they would have to spend in the game mode just became another source of frustration or acted to put some off. The limited time nature, it's expected to last about 6 weeks, also serves to put pressure on players to expedite that grind. I do think that there was value in having some rewards to incentivize people to give it a go. I'm in no doubt that some of the people who tried it only for the rewards would end up liking it, but I also think that that could have been achieved with a much shorter renown track, maybe just 5 levels. In fact, I feel that there are likely to be many players who after getting to renown 40 will feel so burned out that they'll never want to play it again, but had it capped out at renown 5 would probably have said, yeah, I want to give that another go from time to time. As it was, the end result of this renowned track was player v player frustration as different and incompatible goals clashed very much to the detriment of the game mode's reception. This is the first time since Burning Crusade we've had a major content release with no public testing at all. Given Blizzard's lack of experience with blind releases, the launch stability and lack of bugs was highly impressive and there's no doubt the team did a great job testing wise. The only gap was that it really felt to me like a usability pass would have venetated the game mode as it likely would have caught issues like the weird default key bindings or the way that transmog changes were being lost between matches. In fact, looking at how well this event went, it makes it all the harder for me to understand the very serious quality issues we experienced just a week previously with the Hearthstone crossover event which, quite bluntly put, let both the players and the WoW team down quite badly. Finally, before I move on to my overall views of the event, I want to look at how it was promoted by Blizzard. The defining factor of this event was the secrecy about what it was. It's fair to say that nobody who wasn't in on it foresaw a battle royale game. 
In fact, no one seriously foresaw a PvP event. I mean, I did see a couple of folks post it would be funny if it was PvP, but you could tell even they were not really taking that seriously. The problem with any surprise is that it's great fun if you like the surprise, but it's also a huge disappointment if you don't. And that was the initial reaction here. Even before the game was playable, the announcement was met by equal measures of anger and joy. My own personal view is that dropping a patch with just one single thing in it, and that thing being PvP, was very counterproductive. Had this been framed as a secret mid-patch PvP event, with the patch number having been attached to Season 4, I think things would have went a lot better reception-wise for Blizzard. At launch, it seemed to me that Blizzard wanted to use this to cross-promote retail and classic. But they also provided details of how to set up and install WoW and also ran a tournament for content creators which included both a mixture of current World of Warcraft creators but also ones who are not so associated with the game. And that makes me think that they hope to use this to promote the World of Warcraft game to a much wider audience. But that's an opportunity I think they very much missed on. With the WoW sub and the easy to find vocal controversy, I think it's very unlikely that many non-current players would be inclined to give it a go. I'm genuinely perplexed why a free weekend over Easter to coincide with the tournament wasn't offered. Had there been a free weekend, I suspect there would have been a bunch of folks giving it a try, and yes, some may well have tried the main game and eventually have converted. My initial reaction to the announcement was, to be honest, disappointment. I've played both PUBG and Fortnite in the past, but those are games which are very much in the it was an okay few hours, but I'd not go out of my way to play them again category. I also didn't need to go online to predict the player reaction. It's very, very weird to me that Blizzard didn't see it coming and do some action to try and head it off. Speaking for myself, I would describe my experience with the game mode as pretty bumpy. I have managed to get to Renown 40 and there have been times that I've had a bit of fun but also times that was super frustration. I did find that towards the end of my journey I did start to have a little more on the fun side especially once I started to take more risks around PvP. But that said, I have ultimately landed where I started with my view of Battle Royale games. It wasn't the worst thing in the world to have to do but it's not something I'd want to make a point of playing, and now that I've hit Renown 40, I doubt I'll ever touch it again. As a standalone game, I would actually rate this very highly regardless. It does manage to offer something new to add to the Battle Royale genre, and I do think that adding more standalone games into the Warcraft franchise, especially smaller scope things like this, could be a very good thing. But as an addition to the main World of Warcraft game, personally, when I want to be playing WoW, I want to be playing in my main character and engaging with the main open world. I don't want to be playing many games on essentially disposable characters. It turns out that I am an MMO player for a reason. So overall, I would rate this 8 out of 10 as a standalone game, but only 3 out of 10 as a World of Warcraft future. I do think that there is merit for Blizzard in taking this forward, but only as a standalone mini game. It could still be included in the sub, but I'd very much prefer to see the entry point to the game being pushed up to the main Battle.net client, and any crossover rewards in future being limited down to the types that we see with things like the Hearthstone crossover. I think this could also help this type of game to get a lot more focused development than it's likely to get if it has to compete with the main World of Warcraft game for resources. As for more events of this type, I do think that the game can benefit from this level of innovation and willingness to try different things, but I'd very much prefer those things that are tried out to be integrated into the main game so that I can play them in my current character and within the world of Azeroth. I am totally up for trying out other game ideas in the franchise, but I'd prefer to see them be separate from World of Warcraft because when I want to play WoW, I want to play WoW. I do think there are a few lessons to be learned from this event for Blizzard. The first lesson to be learned is that ideally don't drop a patch with just one bit of main content. World of Warcraft is a very broad church and you cannot please everyone. But we're still very much used to getting something in every patch. I think it's far better to include events like this with alternatives or to release them as separate events which are not part of the main patch cycle.
That latter point is all about how you manage player expectations. As a community, we effectively gaslit ourselves into expecting PvE content, and dashed expectations rarely go well, as was the case here. Blizzard, I feel, should have seen this going on, and I suspect when they look back about how it played out, they'll realise that having not stepped in to better manage player expectations was a very big mistake for them. Thirdly, in World of Warcraft, PvE and PvP players just do not mix at all well. And finally, cosmetic rewards, it appears, are actually just as powerful as player power rewards are when it comes to making players feel like they have, in inverted commas, to play a thing. That's actually something that I think even us as a player base have probably learned here. I now feel that that assumption we've all had for a long time that you need player power to get people to do stuff in WoW, for example, raid at the highest level, may actually be wrong. And knowing that we can use cosmetics probably will open up some more options for the future of the game. Now, overall, there's no doubt in my mind that had expectations been better managed, the scale of the pushback would have been less severe, especially at launch. That pushback has likely impacted the experiment in ways that has made it harder, if not impossible, for the team to get some of the data that they would have likely have wanted to gather from it. This is a bit of a shame, as this was a big risk and learning opportunity for the team, and they could have used it to inform how they can do more interesting stuff in the future. But instead, I personally have a sneaking suspicion that all that will have been learned from it is what not to do next time. And that, I think, is a very great shame. Well, that's all I have for this week's video. As you've probably seen, I tend to have lots and lots of opinions, and that's really why I decided to start this channel so that I could share all this stuff with you. As I mentioned at the start, I do plan to do a review like this for every patch, usually a few weeks after its release. Most of those reviews will be a lot broader than this one, but with this patch being so dominated by the Plunderstorm, I thought it made sense to just focus on that. Anyways, if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, the best way to do that is to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon so that you get notified whenever a video of mine goes live. Subscribing is by far the best way to support a new channel like this. And if you like this video, do also hit the like icon to let me and YouTube know that this is the type of content you want to see more of. That's all for now, and I will see you all again soon.